Hey recruits. What's up y'all? Thank you so much for tuning in to Recruit Me Corner this week. Yep. It's so awesome to have you back. If you're new to our channel, guys, welcome. Welcome. Please help us out by subscribing. Once we hit our first major goal of 250 subscribers, we're gonna have a major giveaway for one of you. Absolutely. And so you guys don't miss any of our recruiting tips, tricks, and just anything you guys need to know about recruiting, about college, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on our post notification bell so you guys never miss any of our content. Absolutely. All right, guys, so on this edition of Recruit Me Corner, we're going to talk about 10 things not, not to, to do, do when, getting, when recruited. getting recruited. So you want to start with number one? Absolutely. So number one is making sure that no one else is carrying your equipment. Absolutely, You need guys. to carry your equipment. So like, for example, on my team, on my select team, we have bow nets, tees, nets, ball nets. We have everything you can imagine with softball that we bring to warm up with. Um, if you're, unless your coach says otherwise, um, like put it, put it in their car or whatever, you need to carry it. You carry your, the team equipment and your own softball bag, shoes, jugs, everything. You make sure that you have it all in your hands because I'm, I'm pretty sure like 99.9% .9 of a college coach sees your parents carrying your bag, your jug, your equipment, boop, no. And, and guys, even in the younger age groups, parents, have your kids carry their own stuff. It's a good habit to start. It's, it's their stuff. Yep. They need to learn how to be responsible for things. Coaches want to see, once you get to the age group of showcasing, they want to see that you're responsible. They want to see that you care about your own stuff. They don't want to see parents, you know, picking up the slack for their kids. That's not, that's because when they get to college, you're not going to be there. Absolutely. Also, so number two is going to be making sure that the parents don't come to the dugout. If you need water, Gatorade, food, do it between games. Do it before the game starts because I'm sure if you've just played a game, your coach is going to give you five or 10 minutes before the next game starts to go grab some water, some food, mm -hmm. some something. Just making sure that the parents don't come to the dugout and you're not and you're not in the dugout. Dad, mom, screaming because that just looks bad. And, and guys, even in the younger age groups, snow cones in the dugout, you know, Frito pies, all that stuff. No. Cut it out. Yeah, okay. I, I would say give your kid like some fruit, a granola bar, like something that will, you know, fuel them for the next game instead right. of like, you know, a cupcake. You know, I don't know. Like, I mean, hey, cupcakes are great, but that's for after the game. Right, you know? absolutely. Just don't go to the dugout, guys. That's the easiest way absolutely. to explain it. Parents do not go to the dugout. Mm -hmm. Number three, big, big thing, cussing. Cut it out. No, no cussing. Um, parents also no cussing. I, I mean, it's just... It's softball. It's fun. It's, you know, some, I mean, obviously an umpire or, you know, a coach is going to make a bad call at some point in the game or whatever, some point in the day. But I mean, happens every tournament. Literally. If, if you feel the words coming on, pick up your stuff and go to the bathroom, go to the car. I, I mean, I just, I would not, you know, I don't know. I, I don't say those words because they're just, they're just not, not for softball. You know? Well, and, and the thing is, is that it's a respect factor. Absolutely. You know, show respect. I mean, Here's the thing we have to remember about umpires, and I'm going to get into this real quick. Umpires are doing this on their own free will. Yep. They don't deserve to be mistreated. I'm an umpire. Guys, if you think you can do it better, get out there and do it yourself because you'll find out real quick it's not as easy. It's not as easy. Okay. The next thing is inappropriate social media posts. Oh, this is a big one, you guys. If you don't think that... Coaches aren't looking at your social media. And look, just because they follow you on Twitter doesn't mean they're not looking at your Snapchat. Doesn't mean they're not looking at your Instagram, Instagram. Facebook page, your kick. I don't know. Whatever social media is out there, they're looking at it. And you know what? And who knows? Maybe the, one of their players from their school will follow you on Instagram. And they'll be like, oh, this, this person's really nice. Or, oh, this person. Is, and don't think that they don't have them follow you for a reason. Absolutely. And so just be, be careful, you know, don't, like we said, don't cuss on social media. Don't post things, don't post things that you wouldn't, wouldn't you, that you would not want your grandma to see. That's what I say. That's, that's what I, exactly what I was going to say. And that's a perfect way to put it. I mean, be careful. I mean, understand. And, and again, I'm always a big proponent of be who you are on social media, mm -hmm. but don't, don't do that stuff. Absolutely. You know, you wouldn't want your grandma to see it. You don't want that coach to see it because if you don't think they're going to pull an offer and you're sitting there smoking marijuana on on your Instagram, don't think that, don't think that they won't do it. Absolutely. And so we're on to number 5. So that this one is like four things in one. Not hustling, being lazy, 
bad sportsmanship mm -hmm. and um, body bad body language. Those four things I feel like coincide with one another. And if you have a bad attitude, bad body language, I mean, just pick it up. If you made an error, they want to see how you recover from that error because I promise that ball is coming to find you. It is coming for yeah. you and you just have to be ready for the next one. And you know, and if the ball doesn't come and find you, then you keep cheering on your pitcher, cheer on your teammates, you know, whatever. If you strike out, hustle back to the dugout. Everyone strikes out. It's okay. The pitcher just got you. I mean, it's fine. Like pitcher, I mean, they, they got to do their job too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the game of softball. And Bad sportsmanship at the end of the game, you know, now now we just started high-fiving teams at the end of the game again because of COVID. High-five their hand. Don't hit them in the face or smack them, you know, in the arm. Like, that's just not cool. Even if you guys lost 17 to 1, like, smack, like give them a high-five. Smile. Like, it's okay, you know? Be a good sport. Yeah. And guys, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. if you're at a camp in front of a college coach, hustle. Yep. Everywhere you go. You make an error in a camp. No bad body language. Smile. Go on to the next one, guys. They don't expect you to be perfect. They, nope, they don't. Not at all. You're not. Nobody's perfect. You look. I mean, how many errors did we see in the college world, women's college world series? Um, a bunch. A, ton. a bunch. Yes, it, it happens. happens. They know it's going to happen. So you smile and go on to the next one. Period. Absolutely. The next one, not cheering in the dugout. That that's one, a big one. That no, that's like probably like one of the biggest ones on this list. Like, you have to cheer on your teammates, your pitcher. I mean. I mean, pitcher especially, they they use every ounce of energy like that my coach Mark always says. They use every ounce of energy, every pitch. If you're standing there in the field, you can cheer them on. You can right. talk, you can cheer them on. I mean, yes, you exert a lot of energy playing the game too, but the pitchers, they do the most work. And so, you know, cheer on your pitchers, cheer on your the batter that's up to the plate. Because I'm sorry, it's the most un, it's the most sad thing when your team is silent in the dugout when you're hitting. Yeah. That's just like, man, like, you know? Well, and, and for me, it shows, are you a good teammate? Absolutely. You know, coaches want to see that, you know, because let me tell you something. You go to college, your freshman year, you may not play a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be on the dugout mad? Or, you know, because they look at that, they're going to look at that. Are you in the dugout mad? Or are you going to be cheering on your teammate knowing that you'll get your shot maybe the the following year or the year after that? But you, you have to cheer them on no matter what. Absolutely. And, you know, even if you never step foot on the field, you know, in a game, if you never step foot on the field one time, that college coach is still looking at you. Like, there was one tournament, and this was last year, where I didn't play a whole, like, a whole game. And, you know, I wasn't mad. I wasn't sad. I played the whole game before that. You know, I wasn't sad that I wasn't on the field. Other girls need a chance, too. But that coach... Coach Stoltz <laughs> was looking at me in the dugout because I was cheering so loud for my team. And that's that's the one game that she told me that she wanted me on her team because I was cheering the whole time. Yep. Now, number eight, talking bad about your teammates. Guys, when you walk out of that dugout and, and you're at a showcase, you don't know who's standing around you. Absolutely. And they may not have a, a shirt on that shows their school they're from. Yep. Sometimes they don't want that. Sometimes no. they want to blend into the atmosphere and just see how you truly react when they you feel a coach isn't watching. Yep. If you and you walk out of that dugout and go, oh, that was man, I can't believe she had that kind of game. She's I don't even know why she's on this team. No, like don't don't say that. I mean, everyone has a bad game. Also, too, not even just college coaches, not even just parents, other players from other teams, it because softball is as big as it is it's a small world absolutely softball is such a small world you know keep your opinions about your teammates to yourself even if they're not good because i know you're not going to like everyone all the time right but that's your teammate that's the person that those are the people that you spend i don't know two days out of the three days four days out of the week with in right. the summer so just making sure that you are just keeping things inside if they're not good things to say and just keeping them in your brain right well, and you had a deal, and we won't get into it because, but you had a deal where you heard, overheard somebody on another team talking bad about their teammate who you knew. Exactly. And I loved this girl on this other team. And I said something to those girls. I was like, I told them, I was like, you know, you never know who's watching. You never know who's listening. I said, don't talk about her like that because she's wonderful. And you know what? She's on our team. <laughs> Yeah. So, and she's great and I love her. I love her forever. And that's just, it's sad because it's like, you know, you don't know who's listening. Number nine. Yep. Players do not ever talk back to an umpire. Don't no. show them up. Don't show emotion. If they call a strike that's above your head this tall, right? You're going to be like, okay. Yeah. I mean, a co your coach is going to look at you and go, you know, that's not, you know, yeah, that wasn't a strike. However... 
what a coach, and I know Coach Mark, he will say, I'm not concerned with the third strike that you struck out on. What was the first two the first two strikes that you missed? Exactly. You know, that's the thing you have to look at, guys. And the other thing is, do not show up an umpire. If that ball is outside and you know it's outside, don't sit there and draw a line. Yeah. I've seen players do that. And let me tell you something. As an umpire, you're gone. Because I don't care where you think the strike zone is. The only strike zone that's important is mine. Absolutely. And also, too, you know, if, if the other team's parents are yelling at the umpire and you're on the opposite team, don't interact with the other team's parents. Mm -hmm. Don't yell at the other team's parents. You know, don't say, oh, that's not a strike. Like... Just leave him alone. Leave him alone. Like it's just it's it's easy as that. Just don't say a word. The best thing to understand about umpires is if you're if you're on the side of the call, you're always going to think it's a good call. Yeah. If you're on the side on the other side of the call, where you're always going to think it's a bad call. So guys, the best thing to do is just smile, run back to the dugout. Absolutely. That's it. So I'm going to give you an example, guys, of yelling at an umpire. So. Back in 12U, when I coached you guys, mm -hmm. we were at the state tournament. Mm -hmm. And one of my players, she struck out. Yeah. And struck out looking, I believe, mm -hmm. and looked at the umpire and said, Are you kidding me? That wasn't a strike. I immediately, immediately, between innings, made her go back and apologize to that umpire for mouthing off. Period. I don't put up, guys, I didn't put up with it as a coach. I won't put up with it as an umpire. Mm -hmm. It's it's ridiculous. We're, you know what? We're volunteer umpires. Most of your coaches are volunteer. Respect. They're also period. human beings. Right. They're also humans with emotions too. And they've, I'm sure, you know, if, you, if you're if you if you playing a game at three, they were there at, they were there at eight. They were there at seven. They were ready to go at 7 a.m. Yeah. at the field, just like you. So they've been there just as long as you. They've been umpiring probably more games than you've played so give them a break and they make errors just like you do and i mean the the thing you have to understand is like she said you play you know say two games a day on a showcase mm -hmm. right they may be umpiring eight or nine games in a day absolutely so in their the heat, brain is fried yeah in the heat they've got all this gear on just show respect understand that they're not perfect and more importantly, neither are you. Even a simple hello before the game starts. Hey, Blue, how are you? You know? Yeah. I always do that when I'm catching up. When the Blue stands next to me, ready to go, I'm like, hey, Blue, how are you? Like, just just a conversation. I mean, it's simple, but it helps. I mean, helps their brain like, oh, we're at a new game or, you know, yeah. I don't know. I just, I think it's nice. And just be nice to them because they're there to work for you. So. Absolutely. And number 10, guys, we've touched on this in a, in a prior video. Mm -hmm. So I'll put the link up here. Absolutely not sending your emails guys you have to do it i know it's time consuming i know that it takes a little bit but i promise you emails is what got me is what got me recruited emails yeah. will get you recruited those coaches will know where you're at where you're playing what camp you're going to if, if you're going to their camp they will know who you are i mean they'll call you out in front of everyone Pro it's happened to me before yep. i mean go watch go watch our emails video it has everything you need to know it i mean watch it it's very helpful and i just think sending your emails is a great way to get recruited absolutely all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. That's yep. 10 ways to not get recruited. Mm -hmm. So don't do those things, right? Absolutely, yep. All right, guys, so you know, make sure you like, like this video. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, like we said earlier, so you guys never miss any of our great content. And tune into the next Recruit Me Corner. Corner. Bye. Bye.